In this video, we'll take a look at a very quick and easy technique to add the feeling of movement to a scene with speed lines, as well as an extremely quick way to add movement and distortion to text. I've seen this very technique used in motion graphics as well as VFX overlays on top of footage. What's up everyone, hope you're doing well. My name's Shaw Gonsalves from Animation Deconstructed. We're gonna jump straight into the tutorial, but if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn that bell notification on. So inside After Effects, I've got a little scene set up here, and if you wanna download this, head over to the blog. There's a link in the description, and you can download this and follow along. It's just a little scene with some text in and with a background set up. What I want to do next is create a new composition, and we're going to call this Speed Lines. 1920 by 1080p, same size as the scene, and I just want to make it one second long. I'm going to press OK, create a new solid, so right click in the timeline, new and solid. And this can be any color that you want. We're going to call it lines one and press OK. And I'm also going to go over to the effects and presets panel and just start typing fractal and go down to noise and grain, fractal noise, and just double click that. If you need to find it in the effects panel, it's under effects and noise and grain over here and fractal noise. Next thing I want to do, we want to adjust the contrast and the brightness so that we crunch these black and white areas. I'm going to drag right up and let's make this about 3000 or just lower than that. And the brightness I'm going to take up to say about 500. Then I'm going to change the complexity down to three and we should start getting these blotches. And in order to create these lines left and right, so I'm going to do two things. One, I'm going to actually scale this uh, layer by just grabbing on one of the corners and stretching it out, something like this. And then to do even more, I'm going to drop down this transform and I'm going to untick the uniform scaling. And then I'm going to scale on the width right up. Let's say about 2100 and then scale the height right down to, let's try 15 and we should get these little lines over here. Now in the demo, I only had these lines on the top and bottom, so what we can do is just double click to create a mask on this. Double click on the mask and hold control whilst you scale it down, and we should be able to constrain proportions on this. Something like this. Let go and then tick inverted on the mask. I'm going to drop down the mask properties and just add some mask feather to this. Let's say about 16, and I'm pretty happy with that. The next thing I want to do is actually move this from the left to right to add movement to this. And I'm going to do this by turning on the offset turbulence and then moving to one second and taking this all the way to the right and holding shift, you can move a lot faster, a lot quicker. So all the way up to about 8,000 should be good. And just preview this. Something we need to do is take the white out of this so that we've got an alpha on this. The easiest way I've found to do this is to add a color range to this. So it would be under effect, keying and color range. And you'll see this little preview over here. I want to take the fuzziness up and that's, let me just zoom in there. That's because these lines over here, I want to just make sure we get all the white. So I'm going to take that up to say about 80, anywhere around there. And then the first minimum LYR, you want to take it up all the way to 255. And then I'm going to add a fill to this. So if we go to effects and presets on the right, type in fill, double click on that, and we can add a fill color. I've got one written down here, so if you want to follow along, it's just 00 DE FF. And it's just a light blue to complement the scene. And press OK. Press spacebar just to preview this once more. I'm going to twirl that up, and we're going to duplicate this to make a few more copies. Rename this to lines two. So I want to adjust some of these settings. So I'm going to start with the contrast and I'm going to double this to about 5,100. Then I'm going to double the brightness as well. Let's take that up to about a thousand and then drop down the transform and we're going to hold the shift button when you do this. It should cap at about 10,000, the scale on the width and then the height. I'm going to take this right down. Let's go about 4.4 and press play we should get these bigger lines pitching up. Just want to tweak a few more settings. So I'm going to drag up here, just slowly holding the control button. You can actually tweak these in smaller increments and around there should be good. I'm going to duplicate this once more and we're going to edit it just one more time. I'm going to change the color just to have something a bit different to white. And then let's go to the top here and 
take this down to about half again so let's say about 2400 take the brightness down to about 650 we can start seeing it again and then i'm going to change the width so drop down the transform let's hold shift let's actually input about 2100 see what that looks like you can start seeing these again and i want these to be a lot better so i'm going to drag up on the scale height let's actually input 60 over here and see how that looks just press play and take a look at this also want to change how fast this is moving across so i'm going to press the u button and just bring this back to about 5100 so it's at a different speed and that's a lot better so to really sell this technique we need to come over and create a new adjustment layer we're going to add a directional blur so typing in directional and it's under blur and sharp and if you go to the effects panel i'm going to double click on this change the direction to 90 degrees just hold shift and drag the rotation and then the blur length let's just drag up on this let's take this to about 160 should be good and everything should smooth out quite a lot we'll head back into our scene and we will drop the speed lines right into the middle here below the text i'm going to change that to additive and the thing with these speed lines is you want your loop to be extremely short. So I've kept this to about 14 frames and this will enable this to not look like it's jumping at any stage. So we press play and that should look pretty good. If you're finding this tutorial helpful, hit that like button for me. It really does help this video get out to more people. Now we're just going to add some movement to our text in a very easy way. So let's select the speed lines text, which is the largest one. I'm going to go in here and just add a turbulent displace. So under distort, turbulent displace, double click on that. And we're going to change two things. The amount, let's take this down to 15. And the size of this, you can see this is really distorting this too much. Change the size of this right down to about 20. Then what we can do is just turn on the evolution, move over to the 14th frame, and just drag this forward slightly. So let's four revolutions and press play. And just see how this looks. Next thing I want to do is just bring up the position keyframe. I'll click on that and we're going to add a wiggle expression. So type in wiggle. It's this one right here. And if you just hit the enter key, it'll add it and place your cursor between the two brackets. We're going to input three numbers. So three comma five comma five. And I'll show an infographic right here explaining exactly why these numbers work. So pause if you need to read it. I'm just going to hit the enter key and press play. Then what I'm going to do is add a glow to this, take this to about 40 and the glow intensity to about 0.5 should be good. I'm going to copy these two, paste it to the other two texts and copy the position, expression, select both of these, press the P key, alt click on the position, paste and do it to the other one as well. And then just press play and we have our scene done. If you're interested in seeing more tutorials like this, take a look at either of the videos pitching up on the screen right now. Keep animating, and until next time.